And everybody said, I welcome everyone to a workers' training tonight. And when we come for the workers' training, we we'll prepare our minds that the Lord will equip us for the work He has given us in our hands. From our overseers to our pastors and group leaders and the district um, pastors and all the workers that as we come together we're coming with the mind of being trained and when we talk of training you understand there ought to be teaching in the training because if you have a work to do and you need to be enlightened as to how to do it then it means that we are teaching to transform so that the way you do the work is according to God's expectation as we talk about training we have like a model this is a model worker a model pastor a model teacher and then the lord wants to take you and reproduce that model in you training then involves number one t teaching our reproduction a you see, when you come to do the work of God, you need an assignment. And you need to understand the job description. That this is the assignment I have. Because if you just say, I'm a worker, I'm a worker. And we say, in which area are you working? You can't tell. In that area of work, What's the assignment, the duty the Lord has given you? And you want to be so attached to that area of work that if you are truly a reproduction of the model we're talking about, then you will do it acceptably. And then as you have the training, you eventually have influence. You see, when we say that this is a worker and we're training that worker to be a replica of the Lord Jesus Christ, the work I do, you shall do, and greater works than this shall you do because I go to the Father. It means that there's an influence in you, an influence on you. And it is that influence that gives you inspiration so that when you are doing the work you are so influenced that you are addicted to the work you are doing you are not doing it haphazardly as if you know we are just there and so as you come you look at your life as a worker and you look at your production the thing that comes out of you and the Lord then gives you this influence that inspires you to walk without somebody looking over your shoulders. And you do it faithfully. You do it with all your heart. Well, what we're saying is that there is a newness that then comes to you in the way you do the work. And somebody can see you and say that is a trained worker and so as we do the workers training every saturday whether we're transmitting from lagos or we're transmitting from abuja here you understand that purpose and when you are coming you're coming with your heart and you're coming with the understanding that this is a different kind of meeting from all the other meetings and i pray that the lord will grant us understanding in jesus name training will take place transformation will take place that promise the lord jesus christ gave which none 
has attained that he that believeth in me the works i do he shall do and greater works than these shall he do because i go unto my father that that promise will become something very important in every life will aim at it will pursue it until we realize it somebody give me a good amen, amen. tonight we are looking at training and development of a very essential quality in the life of a believer of a worker of a minister of a pastor and it's the subject of faith somebody tell me subject of faith, subject of faith. the lord will develop our faith in jesus name Amen. let's pray together father we thank you for this privilege thank you because you brought us together for a good purpose and i pray that everyone here today will receive something that will transform his life her life in jesus name make us matured help us to grow up give us greater understanding give us better understanding reproduce the faith of christ in every one of us tonight we well, thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray yeah. thank you you can take your seats we're coming to hebrews chapter 11 and i'm reading from verse 1 hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen for by each the elders obtained a good report it's talking about faith and number one it describes faith to us number two he now tells us those who are demonstrated that faith and it says by this faith this kind of faith the elders the patriarchs the people in the old testament under the old covenant they obtained a good report and then he tells us something that faith had done verse 3 through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of god so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear what you're saying there is god created the earth everything we see everything tangible everything we know in the universe and in our world god created that but then it says something he did not use any material to create the world the things we see were made of things that do not appear and now he begins to make it personal he said in us of the people that had faith verse 4 by faith abel offered unto god a more excellent sacrifice than cain he's telling us now if you're going to offer anything unto god like your gift like your service as a sacrifice it has to be by faith otherwise it has no value and it says hey, by that faith he obtained a witness that he was righteous god testifying of his gifts and by it he being dead yet speaks. it says that the influence coming from abel continues today because of faith 
he still speaks verse 5 by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God he said in us the highest goal destination you can have is to please God in all things and at all times and he says Enoch did that and God was so pleased with him that he was raptured to heaven without seeing death and if we're going to take part in the coming rapture the catching up and the catching away of the church we must have faith in God now it brings to a periodic conclusion it's still going through a long chapter but now it comes to a conclusion of this introduction to faith in verse 6 and it says but without faith it is impossible to please him look at that without faith it is impossible for any man any woman any minister any worker to please God without faith he might have activity he might have some devotion he might be full of activities I do this I do this I do that without faith it's not just difficult to please God it is literally impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe must it's not an optional thing it's not like I have activity you have faith this is my specialty works activity run it up and down and I don't care about faith you manifest your faith I demonstrate my word it says no it's not like this or that it is this central thing the faith because it says without faith you cannot please God he who comes to God to offer anything he who comes to God to serve he who comes to God to ask to demand in prayer must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We're looking at an important area of faith tonight. And it is, this is the topic tonight, believing and receiving before seeing. Believing and receiving before seeing. Faith is so important, indispensable, essential for a relationship with God. You cannot have relationship with God if you don't have faith. Faith is so important, essential, indispensable for Christian experiences. The experience of salvation, of sanctification, of the baptism in the Holy Ghost faith is the connection that makes us to have experiences with God faith is so important for our walk with God day by day living as Christ wants us to live walking with God faith is so important for our healing and deliverance there are Christians that will suffer a lot if they don't have this connecting faith for healing and for deliverance saved through faith by the grace of God you're healed you're delivered 
and you experience miracles by faith. Faith is so important for victory in battle. Satan fights. Sin will want to capture your life again. But if you're going to have victory over sin, over self, over Satan, over everything that comes against your Christian life here on earth, faith is central. Faith is so important for dominion over the enemy. The enemy of our souls will conquer. I said, I will conquer. And faith is so important for that. And for us to have exploits and fruitfulness. Exploits. Doing exploits for the Lord. Faith is important. Very essential. To possess our possessions. Thank God. I will possess my possession. And if we're going to possess our possession, faith is so important ultimately to enter heaven for our entry into heaven faith is so important now faith is based and anchored on god's unfailing word here is where many people make their mistakes they base their faith on their feeling I feel good I believe God I feel terrible I feel the pain and where is God that's the question they're asking they are not basing their faith on God's unchanging infallible immutable word some people base their faith on their senses the sense of touch the sense of sight what I see or some people base their faith their faith on their thoughts the way their mind is thinking and that's why the faith does not work because faith is not based on what you see on how you feel or what you touch faith is not based on our imagination i imagine i visualize uh, you know something there something there faith is not based on that faith is not based on earthly knowledge the knowledge you get from the doctor it says that's what is wrong with you and this one killed such and such this one you know destroyed such and such and that earthly knowledge does not grant faith faith is based mainly and centrally on the word of god faith is not based on human possibilities it's not based on your emotional state or any tangible evidence that's why it says in that chapter 11 verse 1 now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen god's promise god's pronouncement god's power the greatest is greater than all those other things we have described he said it so i believe it and i receive it and i confess it and i realize it and i possess it i believe before i see i believe before i see i believe before i see john chapter 20 in john chapter 20 i'm reading from verse 26 john chapter 20 verse 26 and after eight days again his disciples were with him and thomas with them then came jesus the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said peace be unto you 
Then says he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believe him. You know what Jesus said that? Thomas had said, Except I see, I will not believe. That's the principle of the world. Seeing is believing. But you know, in the Christian life, in our relationship with God, believing is seeing. That's what Jesus said, Thomas. You said you must see before you believe. Okay, come and touch. Come and put your feast on my side. And then maybe you can believe. Look at verse 28. Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God, Jesus says unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Seen is believing. Thomas, that's the principle you're applying, and it's of the world. And when we talk about worldliness, that is worldliness. Except I see, I will not believe. That's worldliness. Seeing is believing. That's worldliness. That is operating by the ideals of the world. And Jesus said now, verse 29, Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Believing before seeing. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet they have believed. Second Corinthians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 7. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. For we walk by, tell me, and not by, tell me, you can see that. The Lord wants us to walk by faith and not by sight. And he says, for we, apostles, preachers, servants of God, we, workers, members of the body of Christ, members of the church, we, anyone that is going to walk with God, we walk by faith and not by sight. Look at chapter 4, verse 18. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. While we look not at the things which are seen. That's faith. We're not looking at the things which are seen. I see this mark on my body. We're not looking at things which are seen. I feel this pain in my body. We're not looking at things which are seen. And I see this report that, uh, you know, the doctor just uh, gave me. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. This is terrible. We walk not by sight. We look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Once again tonight, we're looking at the subject, believing and receiving before seeing. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the expectation of faith through God's promises. Faith as expectation. The expectation of faith through God's promises. Number two, the expression of faith in God's presence. You have the presence of God. And so God is big. God is mighty. And you know he's omnipotent. You know he's omniscient. And you know he knows all things. And you know he's omnipresent. He's right there. And you're in the presence of God. And you want to express your faith. You express your faith with the understanding of the God that knows all things. Of the God that is everywhere. 
of the God that can do all things. And tonight, he can do all things. The expression of faith in God's presence. Number three, the experience of faith by God's people. The experience of faith by God's people. Number one, the expectation of faith through God's people. Faith has expectation. You see, there are people that come to the presence of God and they have no expectation at all. They just come. I came last week, I'm coming this week. I came the other time, I'm coming at this time too. And they just come. There's no expectation. And because there's no expectation, nothing ever changes in their lives. But as you come to the Lord, you come with the expectation of faith. You will not be disappointed. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 29. I'm reading from verse 11. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you, to give me, to give me, to give you an expected end. Before you came in, you expected something and before you go out you are given what you are expecting ah i lost your amen it will give you the expected end you look at the promises of god and you say on the basis of these promises this is what i'm expecting it will be done Proverbs chapter 23, reading from verse 18. Proverbs 23, verse 18. For surely, for certainly, without any shadow of doubt, there is an end. There is a goal. There's going to be an achievement. Something will drop into your life tonight. Surely, there is an end. And thine expectation shall not be cut off. When you come to pray before the Lord, you say, I have expectation. Before you pray at all, before you feel anything different, before you see the solution, before you have the answer, before the miracle comes to you, you say, I have an expectation. And you can broadcast it anywhere. You have not even prayed. You are coming to prayer. And you are coming with expectation. And then you say, my expectation shall not be cut off. I am blessed tonight. I'm healed tonight. I'm strengthened tonight. Something is going to change in your life tonight. Proverbs chapter 24. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 14. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. When thou hast found it, then there shall be a reward. Remember, those who come to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. And He says, There shall be a reward. And thy expectation, tell me, tell me, shall not be cut off. Somebody shout amen. amen. Why are we being told over and over 
that our expectation shall not be cut off that you in particular tonight you will take the blessing of god home your weakness will be replaced with strength your need god will supply a change a mighty change will come in your family from tonight how do we have such expectation numbers chapter 23 i read from verse 19 numbers 23 verse 19 god is not a man that he should lie not that the son of man that he should repent as he said i shall he not do it has he ever said anything that he didn't do has he ever given any promise that he did not fulfill whether he gave the promise to an individual or to a family or to a local church or to his church at large or to the nation of israel as he said and shall he not do it as he spoke in and shall he not make it good behold i have received commandment to bless i have received commandment to bless a true pastor receives a commandment from god to bless god's people the one who comes and is angry fighting with the church almost cursing the church insulting the church abusing the church cutting down the church contradicting the church and then when you come in by the time the service ends you are worse at the end than at the beginning the pastor is angry the preachers are angry and the unfortunate members are suffering that's not a true shepherd give me a good amen, amen. a true shepherd has received a commandment to bless he has blessed and Balaam cannot reverse it and Balak cannot reverse it and the prodigal son cannot reverse it and Jonah cannot reverse it he has not beheld iniquity in Jacob neither has he seen perverseness in Israel the Lord is God is with him and the shout of a king is among them God brought them out of Egypt he has as it were the strength of a unicorn surely somebody let me shout surely. surely there is no enchantment against Jacob there's no enchantment against you there is no black power black magic against you there is no evil tongue evil eye against you neither is there any divination against israel as the lord said according to this time shall be said in jacob and of israel what has god wrought is going to do something in your life faith expects faith expects god's word to be fulfilled here i come to the presence of god and i want to pray before you pray identify a promise of god something he has said and base your expectation on that promise not on how you feel not on the energy and the loudness of the person leading the prayer not on emotion not on whether you are kneeling or standing 
not on the shaking and not on the you know things that some people do clapping their hands or turning around or doing that you don't base your faith on that you look at the promise of god and then you base your expectation on that promise of god it will be done it must be done jeremiah chapter 1 i'm reading from verse 12 jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12 the expectation of faith this is how faith works jeremiah 1 verse 12 then said the lord unto me thou hast well seen for i will hasten my word to perform it he will hasten his word tonight hasten his promise tonight there'll be a performance in your life tonight in jesus name ezekiel chapter 12 in ezekiel chapter 12 reading from verse 25 for i am the lord you see your lord i will speak and the word that i speak shall come to pass he will speak to your heart he will write the promise on the canvas of your heart and it says and the word i speak shall come to pass it shall no more be prolonged the promise of god for your life it shall no more be prolonged somebody had a dream and the lord said this is what i will do and it came right out of the word of god and since that time you have been expecting this will be done and it has not been done but now god says today first of december 2018 no more delay it will not be prolonged anymore in jesus name verse 28 verse 28 therefore say unto them thus says the lord god that shall none of my words be prolonged anymore none of my promises be prolonged anymore it will happen faith expects that god's power will prevail faith expects that god's promise will be realized faith in god in the true god does not expect him to fail do you expect god to fail faith in god does not expect satan or evil spirits to be greater than god higher than god stronger than god they will come down from your life faith does not expect that we see or we feel to be more real than the invisible god i don't expect faith to say that that chair you're sitting on is more real because it's solid than the invisible god the things that are not seen they're more real the air that will breathe are you breathing i'm asking somebody there yeah. do you see the air you are breathing no. no what you don't see is more important than what you see you cannot live by that chair you're sitting on even though you can see it you can feel it you can touch it it's solid you can pick it up because it's tangible but it is not as important as the air we breathe that you cannot see the things we don't see they're more important that's what gave moses the victory that's what gave moses the power because he lived as seen him that is invisible and so tonight the expectation of faith will bring a performance 
of all the promises of God in your life. Whatever promise you are holding on to, whatever promise you are expecting to be fulfilled, tonight is the night of fulfillment. The expectation of faith will grant answers to every prayer. Before you pray, before you ever open your mouth, your expectation is, what I'm going to tell God now is going to be done. By the time we hear the final amen, I know it is so. That is faith. Expectation of faith will bring solution to all problems. All the problems you are bringing in to the house of training, and to the school of training tonight all those problems are solved in jesus name <laughs> expectation of faith will bring freedom freedom from all bondage the chains are broken the fetters are broken and all the things that bind you they will be totally destroyed in jesus name expectation of faith will bring righteousness in daily living it says go and sin no more you accept that you believe that and sin will not have dominion over you the expectation of faith brings power for your hour whatever is the challenge of the hour whatever is the difficulty of the time faith will bring power to overcome in summary of that point faith will bring the sufficiency of christ into your life no need no lack no limitation in your life as you approach god by faith you understand that I'm expecting this to be done, they'll be done in Jesus' name. Point number two now, the expression of faith in God's presence. The expression of faith in God's presence. Now look up here for a moment. Let's say for example now you come to the presence of your father earthly father and then you look at your father knowing that you are in his presence and you say that i don't believe you i don't believe that that thing you said you will do it and your dad says do you mean i'm a liar well i didn't choose that word but that's the implication and when you come to the presence of the heavenly father the way you express yourself will show the faith you have that you are expressing what you actually believe of your heavenly father the expression of faith in god's presence how do we express ourselves in the presence of god second samuel chapter 7 verse 25 second samuel chapter 7 reading from verse 25 in verse 25 it says and now O lord god this man is expressing himself in the presence of god the word that thou hast spoken Concerning thy servant and concerning his house, establish it forever. Tell me what follows. Tell me out loud. All together, you say one, two, three, go. That's how you express yourself in the sight of God, in the presence of God. Faith comes in the presence of God, and all he's saying is. You said you were healed, do as thou hast said. You said, whosoever comes to you, you will not cast out, do as thou hast said. You said, I am the Lord that sanctify you, do as thou hast said. 
you say that your promise will no more be prolonged do as thou hast said when you come to the presence of god you express your faith by bringing the promise of god to him and saying do as thou hast said we're coming to first kings chapter 17 the expression of faith the expression of faith chapter 17 verse 1 and elijah the tishbite who was of the inhabitants of gilead said unto ahab look at this as the lord god of israel liveth can god die tell me so elijah said god cannot die and as long as God is alive, as long as God, the God of Israel, lives, before whom I stand in God's presence. What I say now, Elijah was telling Ahab, I say, as in the presence of God, there shall not be dew nor rain these years but according to my word is the expression of faith in the presence of god when you after you are prayed then you talk to people remember god is there and you're in the presence of god and say according to my word this will happen you will not say i am dying no help no sustainers no care nobody loves me what are you saying in the presence of god bring out your faith and speak by faith the expression of faith in god's presence according to my word according to my word that word will be fulfilled look at verse 13 in verse 13 elijah said unto her fear not fear not fear not many people christians they live in fear they are imprisoned by fear they are captured by fear their heart is seized by fear you know why they live in the presence of man they live in the presence of, wo of a woman and they think that man can hurt me that woman can injure me they don't see their god they don't understand i am with you tell me the next word always unto the end of the world the lord is with you and it's greater than that woman and it's greater than that man anywhere you are you understand you're in the presence of god because he goes with you everywhere he will never leave you and therefore you can say fear not as thou hast said do as thou hast said and make me thereof a little cake first and bring it unto me and after make for thee and for thy son for thus says the lord god of israel was we'll he in church i said was we'll he in church no was he preaching no you see there are some people they only declare the word of god when they are preaching they only declare the word of god when they are in the house fellowship if they go to somebody's house a widow's house and that widow has nothing and the widow is crying walker they start crying with her i'm sorry this is terrible I'm sorry what you are going through. I feel it to the depth of my heart. Uh -huh. Exaggerating the problem. But Elijah, he got to that house. If you are a man, 
you are a man every hour of the day. If you're a woman, you're a woman every hour of the day. Okay, I said that to say this. If you are a prophet, you are a prophet every hour of the day. It is not that you are a prophet in church and then you are an ordinary empty person outside wherever you are. Anywhere you are, if you are a prophet, you are a prophet. If you are a pastor, you are a pastor. If you are a servant of God, you are a servant of God. In the widow's house, on the road, in the bus, anywhere you find yourself, a prophet is always a prophet. And so, in that house is said, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste. The barrel of meal shall not waste. Neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she went, tell me, and did according to the saying of Elijah. That woman counted Elijah a prophet. Elijah is no more here. But thank God I'm here. Yeah. And if I tell you something, you know, familiarity brings unbelief. Yes, I understand. Family brings content over there. But familiarity brings unbelief. Because we're together. Because we interact. Because we know. That's how you used to say. That's the verse you quote. Point one, point two, point three. Familiarity. Then you don't believe. Thank God tonight you believe. It is well with you. The prayer you pray today and the rest of your life, God will always answer you. She went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the cross of oil fail according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. I believe God. I said I believe God. Uh, look at Psalm 16 verse 8. Psalm 16 verse 8. I have set the Lord always before me, God's presence, because it's at my right hand. Tell me now. Say that aloud. Let Satan hear. That's what to say. That's what to say. This one comes, that one comes, that one erupts, that one is broken down. Your God is greater than that. I shall not be moved. Psalm 26. Psalm 26, verse 1. Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord. Therefore, say it for yourself. Therefore, say it again, I shall not slide. I will not backslide. I said, I will not backslide. The same grace available for me is also available for you. The same power that upholds me, that same power upholds you. You will not backslide. Psalm 62, I'm reading from verse 6. 62, verse 6. He only is my rock 
and my salvation. He is my defense. He will defend you. In the day, he will defend you. In the night, he will defend you. And when you don't even know what may be happening, he will continue to defend you. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. What do I say? What's your expression of faith? I shall not be moved. Psalm 118. Psalm 118. Psalm 118. We're reading verse 17. Psalm 118. Verse 17. I'm waiting for you to open the Bible. You will possess this verse. You will experience this verse. You will express your faith according to this verse. One, two, three, go everybody, verse 17. Typhoid fever will not kill you. Malaria will not kill you. And those six hanging out in the night will not kill you. And the things happening to other people, that one is gone, that one is gone. When I come back, I will still see you there. Say it again, verse 17. If, if sickness ever comes your way, if sickness ever knocks at the door, before you think of any other thing, and before you even pray, before you even say anything to the Lord, before you express your faith in a verbal manner in prayer, you come here and you say, I will not die. I will not die. I'm looking at somebody there. I will not die. But leave. Your wife will not die. She will live. That your child will not die. He will live. That loved one in the hospital now will not die. But leave. And all the workers here, where are they? You will not die. You will live. And you will declare the works of the Lord in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 50. Isaiah chapter 50. I'm reading from verse 7. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 7. For the Lord God will help me. The Lord God will help me. Therefore, I shall not be confounded. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint. And I know that I shall not be ashamed. Shame is gone. Reproach is gone. There is the expression of faith in the presence of God. Psalm 17. Psalm 17. I'm reading from verse 15. 17. Verse 15. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I I shall be satisfied. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. It will satisfy you. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 27. Acts chapter 27. I'm reading from verse 25. Acts. 27 verse 25 
Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. Take away your sorrow. Wipe away the tears. Brothers and sisters tonight, be of good cheer. Are you carrying a heavy load? Be of good cheer. Is life endangered? Be of good cheer. Are you suffering pain in your body? Be of good cheer. Have you been defeated in the battles of life? Be of good cheer. For I believe God. I believe God that it shall be. It shall be. It shall be. Even as it was told me. Everything you have had tonight, it shall be. Answers to your prayer, it shall be. Yokes broken, it shall be. Power for service, it shall be. Faith expresses God's promise, not man's fears, not Satan's doubts, not enemy's threats, not present circumstances, not bodily pain, not historical ideas, not current trends. When you come before God in prayer, the only thing you express is the promise of God. Faith contains against fear. Fear will not hold in your life. Faith conquers contrary feeling. Whatever negative feeling you feel, you have, when you come to God in prayer, faith will conquer everything. Faith calms frightening thoughts. Somebody told you something, and it's a sudden fear. Move on to your faith. Faith will calm those frightening thoughts. Faith corrects all false suppositions. Suppositions are superstitious. It happened to them like this, like this, like that. And there are some people that go to dig at the backyard of their houses. They're looking for generational causes. Superstition. Supposition. There's no curse upon the life of a child of God. And faith corrects all the false suppositions. Faith controls the fury of the enemy's fire. Nebuchadnezzar said, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. What am I hearing? Is it true that you will not bow to my idol? Is it true? You will not surrender your life to me? Is it true? You will not submit to my idolatry? Now, I give you another chance. When you hear the sound of the carnage, the dulcimer, and all the instruments of music of the idol worshippers if you fall down and worship me all right but if you refuse who will deliver you out of my hand faith controls and cancels the fury of the fear of the enemy some people cannot look up at the faces of their enemies they're always looking down when you're looking down they catch you they club you they know that your heart does not fully depend on your god look up because you are going up look up because he has lifted you up look up Nebuchadnezzar is a nobody in the sight of the Almighty God. In the next chapter, Nebuchadnezzar is going to eat grass like an animal. Is that the person you're afraid of? They looked up at him. They said, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar the king, we're not careful, we're not worried, we're not anxious to answer you. If it be so, go ahead, make your fire. The God we serve somebody there is serving an almighty God 
the God we serve is able to deliver you out and deliver us out of your hand. Nebuchadnezzar became more furious. They will eat their words. That thing they said, I'll cast you there. No, they'll cast their own people there. And he cast Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fire. The people that cast them into the fire, the, fire, the flame of the fire burnt them and they died. But thank God, I shall not die. But live. And I will declare the works of God. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, those are my companions. Those are my friends. They are my senior brothers. We belong to the same father. The same sin, the same protection on them will be upon me. Amen, Amen for me, I vote for you. Amen. This stood up. In that fire, you will stand. Amen. And then Jesus came from heaven. He's coming to you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And Nebuchadnezzar got up. He was surprised. They will be surprised. All the things we did to that young man, all the things we did to that young woman, she's still succeeding. She's still standing. She's still healthy. She's growing younger. They'll be surprised. He called his people. Did we not cast three people into the furnace? Behold, I see four. One, two, three, four. And the appearance of the fourth one is like the Son of God. You have won the victory. Faith controls the fury of the enemy's fire. Faith confirms the faithfulness of God. God is faithful. I said God is faithful. I said God is faithful. And faith continues to hold fast until it is done. And it becomes a reality. God will work out his goodness in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Acts chapter 27, reading from verse 25. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. Are you still sorrowful? I say, are you despondent? Be of good cheer. For I believe God that it shall be even, even, even as it was told me. Point number three. The experience of faith by God's people. The experience of faith by God's people. Look at Romans chapter four. Romans chapter four. I'm reading from verse 16. It says in verse 16, Therefore, it is of faith. Your life from today, it is of faith. Your work, serving God from today, it is of faith. And you're moving on, walking with God. It is of faith. That it might be by grace, to the end, the promise might be, made, might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only, which is of the law, but also to that which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. The faith of Abraham. What kind of faith are you supposed to have? The faith of Abraham. I said, what kind of faith are you supposed to have? The faith of Abraham. What are the characteristics of that faith? Look at verse 17. Number one, the foundation of that faith is a written 
promise of God. The reaching of promise of God. Look at verse 17. As it is reaching, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed. Even God who quickness the dead and call it those things would be not as though they were. What kind of faith? The faith that is based on the reaching promise of God. Open your Bible. Look for a promise there that goes along with the challenge you have. And as you see that promise, you base your faith on that reaching promise. Number two. The latter part of verse 17. Who quickness the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. You are praying and then you are calling uh, the solution. Even though you have not seen the solution and you are calling those things which be not as though they were. You see yourself on the other side of the ocean. Let us cross over. And while you're still on this side, you see yourself on that side. I see myself strong. I'm talking about you. I see myself strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. See each before you have it. Calling those things with be not as though they were. Number three, believing and hoping against hope. Look at that. Verse 18, who against hope, believed in hope. Against hope, it was a hopeless situation. And yet she believed in hope that she might become the father of many nations according to that which is spoken, so shall thy seed be. Number four, you are not weak in faith. And you will not consider your physical condition. You are not weak in faith. You will not consider your physical condition. Brother, let's go out for evangelism. Don't you see me? The way I am now, what do you think I can do? If I go, don't you think I will die by the way? Ah... He has not changed his language. On this 4th of December, when everything bad is turning to good, when the weak are becoming strong, and when the promises of God are yes and amen in our lives, he is still talking like the old, old situation, and he's weak in faith. I will not be weak in faith. You will hope against hope, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which is spoken so shall thy seed be and being not weak in faith he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb number one the foundation of faith is the rich in promise Number two, you're calling those things which be not as though they were. Number three, you're believing, hoping against hope. Number four, you're not weak in faith and you're not considering physical conditions. Number five, not staggering in unbelief. You will not shake. The Lord is on my side. I shall not be moved. Look at verse 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. And then we're told, number six now, he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. You will have a testimony. You will give your testimony. Things will change from tonight. Strong in faith, giving glory to God. Number seven, you're fully persuaded of performance I am persuaded tonight a performance in your life verse 21 I'm being how persuaded I'm being how persuaded fully persuaded that what he has promised he was able also to perform 
what God has promised tonight is able to perform able to perform where I said where it is done Mark chapter 9 verse 20 verse 23 Jesus said unto him if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believeth lord i believe mark chapter 11 i'm reading from verse 12 mark 11 verse 12 and on the morrow when they were come from bethany he was hungry and seeing the fig tree afar off having leaves he came if haply he might find anything thereon and when he came to it he found nothing but leaves for the time of figs was not yet look at this and jesus answered and said unto it no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever and his uh, and, and his disciples heard it but they didn't see any change but jesus said it and jesus knew since he had said it it must happen but the disciples did not see any change but look at verse 20 and in the morning the following day they passed by and they saw the fig tree tell me say it now with assurance dried up from the roots look up here jesus spoke the word no man eat fruit of thee anymore forever and the disciples were looking at the branches they were looking at what they can see they could not see the root and because they could not see the root they didn't know that the answer had come as they were passing by the following day they saw that the whole tree had dried up from the root what happens is let's say somebody has cancer and there's the visible evidence of that cancer the saw and the swelling but you see the cancer has root into the body and when the prayer of the man of god or your own prayer says cancer be healed come out and the people of god said amen you might still be seeing the outward evidence of the cancer but the root has dried up and when i see you the next day now the branches are also all dried up sometimes you have a problem and the problem is like a tree there is a visible part of the problem and there's the root invisible part of the problem down deep into your life and the the curse of that problem hidden away like the roots when we speak the word of god and i say you are delivered in jesus name and the people of god said amen the root that you did not see and you do not see all that one dries up and then as the root dries up there is nothing to sustain the branches the branches too will dry up your mountains will move your problems will vanish away the sickness will be healed and when you hear that word from the root the work is done verse 22 and jesus answering says unto them have faith in god for verily i say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart 
but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass tell me he shall have whatsoever he says tonight i will have whatsoever i say i will have whatsoever i say say it with conviction i will have whatsoever i say therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that ye receive them believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them that's faith that's faith faith is believing and receiving before you see it and as you have that faith tonight remember before you pray there's an expectation there's something you're hoping for there's something you desire and then you look at the promise of god and the promise of god will not fail and he says i will do it now it will no longer be prolonged and then you say lord now i come here is my expectation do you, as you have said and the answer has come already rise up and tell the lord rise up and tell the lord and put your bible on your chair and be very free and tell the lord oh lord tonight is a night of blessing for me a night of strength for me a night of solution for me a night of empowerment for me a night of realization for me a night of having a night of receiving that which i am asking tell the lord tell the lord and take your expectation to the lord in prayer what do you expect tonight what are you expecting tonight what are you expecting tonight any challenge in your life you want the lord to remove the work of god you're doing how is it what are you expecting the lord to do strengthen you empower you uphold you re-energize you refresh you and renew your zeal what's your expectation tonight training brings transformation what area of your ministry area of your life area of your family are you expecting there'll be a transformation tonight a renewal tonight a reproduction tonight that the lord will reproduce 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 the confidence and the courage of the lord the power the conviction of the lord reproducing you the courage the boldness to do the work of god reproduce the fruitfulness expectation will not be cut short your expectation will not be cut short your expectation will not be cut short you come with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind i know the thoughts that i think towards you thoughts of peace and not of evil thoughts of progress and not of retrogression i know the thoughts i think towards you thoughts of achievement thoughts of success not of failure not of defeat i know the thoughts i think of you thoughts of a fool developed minister worker to give you an expected end to give you an expected end what's your expectation
to be strong not to remain weak to be prayerful not to remain prayerless to be focused not to be distracted what's the expectation to be strong not to be weak what's the expectation tonight to go to a higher level higher level higher level not to a low lower level what's the expectation tonight fulfillment of the promise of god in your life a performance a performance a performance fulfillment of the glorious promise of god promise of restoration promise of renewal promise of strength promise of holding on holding firm steadfast unto the end the expectation of faith and coach on the promises of god based on the promises of god built on the promises of god a new life a new energy a new strength a new power a new commitment now the expression you express your faith in the presence of God cut off all those negative uh, confessions all those depressing uh, utterances cut them off I am strong I am well I am healed I am delivered I shall not be confounded I shall not be ashamed I shall not die but leave to declare the works of God I will not fall I will not backslide I will not slide the expression of faith I believe God it shall be even as it was told me I believe I believe I believe I'm going stronger and stronger higher and higher I believe give expression to your faith any problem on your child any child there give expression to your faith don't let darkness set in in your heart you are son daughter of light let the light shine the light of the glory of god let it shine no depression no despair no anxiety no worry i know i know i know i will see my expectation fulfilled i believe god it shall be 
even as it was told me i believe god it shall be even as i had tonight in the word of god believe the lord your god so will you prosper believe this prophet so will you be established the experience of faith by god's people experience of salvation experience of holiness experience of sanctification experience of power baptism in the holy ghost experience of healing experience of health experience of strength experience of victory over the enemy the experience of faith by god's people tonight experience god more than you have ever done that fruitless tree will die from your life tonight in jesus name we pray god has answered your prayer god has granted you the miracle god has fulfilled this promise upon your life there is an addition in your life today something you didn't have you were asking for you have asked now the lord has given it and confirmed it in your life in jesus name i believe god i believe god it shall be it shall be as it was told me your cup will not run dry your life will not run dry you will not be tired in the middle of the way the project you have started you will finish nobody else will take your place you'll be stronger you'll be higher you'll be healthier and the goodness of god will never stop in your life so it shall be i have received what are you i have received father in jesus name i pray for every one of your children our workers our leaders our pastors overseers here tonight lord i pray let there be a confirmation in every life in jesus name their cups will not be empty their hearts will not be weak in their war for the lord there will be no defeat there will be no failure power in their lives tonight performance in their lives tonight achievement in their lives tonight success in their lives tonight everywhere they go no man shall be able to stand before them lord i pray every enemy they have conquered already every stronghold they have conquered already i pray everyone here everyone over there everyone hearing my voice lift them up higher lift each one up higher your sorrow is gone your sickness is gone your oppression is gone all the darkness is gone all the confusion is gone your fears are gone your doubts are gone 
answer has come in your life solution has come in your life mountain be removed in jesus name every power of darkness against your life they're broken down in jesus name you will succeed you will overcome all you need to be supplied thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord your people are blessed in jesus name now you can move on from strength to strength i will hear your testimony the church will hear your testimony and the work of god will continue to prosper in your hand lord grant your people all their expectations thank you lord because i know you have answered in jesus name i pray amen you are blessed